Well, hello there and welcome to the book club. I'm so glad that you came to join us because we are, are talking about and reviewing Exposed Witchcraft in the Church. My latest book, it's a prophetic alert mm -hmm. and I'm very um, passionate about this assignment. And I have with me Shirley Seeger. And Hello. Shirley is um, going to be uh, ministering to you as well as myself on this subject. But today we want to talk about weapons. The weapons, right. You know, it's, it's, it's when you go into warfare, it, to know your enemy is just as important as knowing yourself and knowing what your arsenal is. If you know what your arsenal is and you know your enemy, it's like the, the art of war. There's a famous quote in there where it says, if you know yourself and you know your enemy, you cannot be defeated. If you know yourself but you don't know your enemy, you will suffer defeats at times. And if you don't know either, you will suffer defeat oh, all the time. Wow. So it's like you have to be equipped with your weapons. What are the weapons, Patricia? You, right. you have 12 weapons that you, you go into detail so in here. There are so many weapons in Scripture, and I just pull out my 12 most favorite ones in this book that I have found that really work. But it's really important. And before I share on weapons, I want to um, share, first of all, your position in Christ is important. Mm -hmm. As a believer, it's so it's important so to important. know who you are because we're not earthly beings trying to get into heaven. Mm -hmm. We're heavenly beings living in the earth. Mm -hmm. And we have to know that we are positioned in the heavenly places with Christ, mm -hmm. in Christ, and that our warfare is from that place. Right, right, exactly. We aren't in the earth helpless trying to shoot the enemy no, out of exactly. our corner. We are not to be in a defensive position. We are to be over a royal priesthood. Right? We're right. a royal priesthood. Amen. Um, but I want to share specifically, out of the 12, I want to share my most favorite weapon. Okay. And, of course, um, love would be the granddaddy of them all because every weapon is inside of love. So I'm not going to cover love That's on That's a nuclear right weapon. Now. That is a nuclear <laughs> weapon. And love always has to be our motivation, mm -hmm. and especially when we're in, involved in warfare. Um, but righteousness, righteousness is our greatest weapon okay, against explain witchcraft. That. Explain that. I've always tried to pull that word apart. Righteousness. What does it mean? Righteousness means and it means many things and covers many things. For for example, righteousness is right standing with God. Uh -huh. Righteousness is right behavior before God. Uh -huh. okay. Righteousness is right behavior before man. Okay. Righteousness is doing what is right. Okay. Right? Okay, so so the Bible is our handbook for life, and we need to live by the word. We, if you don't know I mean, the word. <laughs> if, it, if it says it in the word, then let's do it. It's our handbook for life. It'll teach us how to eat properly. Mm -hmm. It'll teach us how to spend our money. It'll teach us about financial affairs, family affairs, marriage, you know, fr friendships. It teaches you everything you need to know about life. And if you follow the word, you will be blessed. And you know, it also teaches you who you are who in you Christ are, yep. and the victory that he accomplished for us. Now, when we invite Jesus to come into our heart, he is righteousness. Mm -hmm. He is absolutely flawless yeah. in character, in nature. There isn't one little thread of sin in him, mm -hmm. there is nothing that has ever been compromised. He is absolutely pure, holy, and everything about him is right, and everything he does is right. So when we invite Jesus Christ into our life, guess who comes in? Righteousness, perfect right. righteousness comes inside and lives inside of us. So inside your spirit, when you're a born again believer, you have Christ's righteousness inside of you, and therefore you are righteous. That's your identity. Okay, so we have to start there. When mm -hmm. we're talking about the weapon of, of righteousness, we have to start with knowing that righteousness just isn't something in our hand. Mm -hmm. It is our identity. It mm -hmm. is who you are. So let's say, and I love this example. I use it in, in the book as well. But let's say that I go out and buy a quality table. So let's say this, this table is a real quality table, mm -hmm. okay? So this table is identified as a table and as a quality table. Just perfect in its grain and it's, you know, everything. The, the way it was put together is perfect. So this is the identity is a nice of table. the table. Okay. <laughs> but if I allow dust to settle on this table, mm -hmm. or let's say I eat 
some sushi on this table and mm -hmm. leave little bits of raw salmon on it. <laughs> Or let's say I'm eating a drippy hamburger on the table and some of the meat's fallen off and you know, you got rare hamburgers here and you some sushi it. meat there. And you just you just have all this stuff on the table. You know what's gonna happen? Little critters are gonna come and find that. Oh. You're gonna have bacteria, mm -hmm. maybe salmonella, you'll have maybe rats and mice and other creepy things, cockroaches and everything, go on that table. They will find the garbage on that table. Now, that doesn't mean the table is no longer a table. Mm -hmm. The table is still a table. It's just been defiled. But it's been defiled. Yeah. And therefore, that has to be cleaned up. So your, your identity of righteousness will never change. Mm -hmm. When you have Jesus in your heart, you are the righteousness of God defiled. in Christ Jesus. But if you don't keep the body clean, mm -hmm. if you don't keep the heart clean, you can get critters on there. It can, it, it, it can be defiling. And then you lose your power. Oh, yeah. Like, who wants to eat on a table that's full of rats and mice and cockroaches and stuff like that? I don't. It is <laughs> repulsive. Like, yeah. no one would come near that. And no one would want to sit down and eat at that table, mm -hmm. right? And so this is, this is extremely important that we understand this, is that our identity is righteousness. But equally as important is that we live out the righteousness, right. keeping our heart pure. Now, in the body of Christ today, I have a concern. And I have a concern even amongst many leaders in the body of Christ mm -hmm. that are preaching, you can do whatever you want behaviorally and it doesn't matter. I, I, spoke, oh, to a, no. I spoke to a Christian leader not that long ago and I addressed the situation because he was on Facebook telling people that it was okay to, to, to use swear words. And he was building a whole theology around, go ahead and use swear words, that's fine. And I said, are you kidding? And, and I used the example, I said, what would you think if you had a, a three-year-old, four-year-old child, and they run around saying, F you, F you, you know, and use the whole Holy words. Holy cow, what was his? He says, well, I don't think that would be right. I said, why not, if it's okay? Yeah. You know, it is, it, it is because our spirit knows. It's, that, yeah, that, it's that, It says in the Bible that no corrupt communication proceed from your mouth. Mm -hmm. And so, these things are not neutral, and don't let anyone hoodwink you. It's the same with sexuality. Uh -huh. We've got it preached by many leaders in the body today, saying it's okay, you know, to live a lifestyle of 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 having a same-sex partner even in marriage. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. And, and it's frightening. The Bible it, has things to say about that. It we does. cannot compromise that. It, it really does, and and it's when when you're a leader, the the. The responsibility is so much greater, and you will be held much higher. Exactly. Right? And you just, it, exactly. and they follow you like sheep. It, it is like known that, that there's only a small percentage of people that actually lead, and they're the, they're the thought provokers, the thought leaders. They lead the rest, and it is like a sheep and a shepherd. Mm -hmm. And you ha you, if you are a shepherd, oh, wow. Yeah. Yes, especially like if you've been given care of the flock and you and you abuse that authority and abuse the flock, um, there's their blood will be on your head. There is severe consequence yeah. for that, and we don't take it. Um, you know, we don't take it as as seriously as we should. Oh well, yeah. oh well, oh well. Yeah. And then when you try to adjust uh, uh, address it, you could be called judgmental mm -hmm. or whatever. But we need to be very careful. I was just. Um, you know, reviewing a situation recently where, where a a preacher who had a, a, a great sphere of influence and area of anointing um, decided that he was unhappy with his wife, so he goes and has an adulterous affair with a no, woman, yeah. and then you know leaves his wife for the woman, and I mean it's just an a, a absolute mess. I mean I've seen this other times in the body where they'll actually divorce their wife, marry their mistress, and then think it's okay once they're married, you know. But it's not. Jesus said if a man divorces his wife and marries another woman, he is in adultery. Mm -hmm. And he didn't say that it would never not be adultery. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like when the divorce papers come through or whatever, it's still it's still adultery. And so um, I 
I am concerned that all these different things that I just mentioned, you know, we could go into drunkenness, uh, getting high on pot now. Uh -huh. You know, many believers just think it's fine. But what we're opening the church up for is for a curse. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Now, the weapon of righteousness. Now, you know this person because we, we, we interviewed them together. Mm -hmm. But they were in a meeting sent by a satanic coven to curse a particular yeah. uh, well-known televangelist. They were in a big stadium with about 10,000 people in the stadium. And they were sent there to curse the evangelist. But when they saw the evangelist, he had so much light on him, they couldn't curse. They could not curse. They couldn't even. And I've heard this from a number of different uh, 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 people who used to be in devil worship. I interviewed someone who was, um, who grew up in a devil worship family, was mm -hmm. taught how to curse and send spells out at age eight, was uh, doing some serious stuff. But as he grew older, he was sent by his coven leader into bars, taverns, and nightclubs to find compromised Christians mm -hmm. because they want to destroy the power, the active potential power. That, the, that's their assignments. And, yeah. and I've heard from Satanists, ex-Satanists, that they can actually see the light they yeah. can tell who Christians are because there's a light that they can see. But this man said he knew the compromised Christians. They were compromised by dancing to the devil's music, you know, getting drunk on alcohol, some doing drugs, being seductive and things like that, using, you know, bad language and telling off-color jokes and things yeah. like that. And, and not he, only he the, knew not, them. Not only, not only can they see that, they can also see whether they're engaging their weapons. So are, do they know who they are? And do they know what they carry? Because as a Christian, you carry a massive amount. And this one guy gave me this real, this amazing explanation. He said, "I would like to go to Ma I like to go to Mardi Gras and pick on the Christians. And the reason why I can go and pick on them is because." Number one, I can see them coming. I can see the light around them. All Christians have a light around them. And I will take my little pea shooter and I'll shoot at him and I'll bother him. I'll, I'll, I'll upset him. And sometimes I'll get one right in his eye. I'll hurt him, you know. And, and if he doesn't know that he's carrying an AK-47 on his back and can take me out with just a glance... Yeah, then yeah, yeah. I, I can pick on him and make fun of him the whole time. Mm -hmm. So you need to know who you are and what you carry and the power you carry. And the power of righteousness. Right. I've heard from so many uh, ex-Satanists. I mean, I mean, God's power is real and his righteousness in us is a huge light. It is. It's a blinding light a lot of times. And so we don't want to compromise that righteousness because it stands alone as a weapon. Mm -hmm. You don't even have to be aware that you're you're utilizing it. It just is fighting for Your you. Your shadow it will be It is fighting a for you. Stay up. Now, um, in the book, I share a story mm -hmm. about this man of God, an amazing man of God. He's gone on into glory now, um, but he was an evangelist, revivalist, apostle over in uh, Africa. And, the, and he had a tremendous power. I mean, he used to fast and pray for 40 days at a time and, and uh, go out and establish churches in the middle of a demon-infested area. And I mean, it was just amazing how he dethroned the enemy in that area. It was awesome. But one night he woke up uh, from from a dream where the Lord had shown him three high-powered Satanists that had band together from the continent of Africa and were coming to him, going to impersonate being Christian evangelists, oh, wow. carrying Bibles and everything. They were in suits, ties, holding their Bibles. He saw this in the dream, and the Lord said they're going to impersonate Christians, but they're Satanists. And they have already done their rituals. They're filled with demonic assignment and power. And they're going to release it to you with the shaking of the hand. When they shake your hand, they, they are going to release the curse. So he wakes up from the dream, goes into prayer. Later on that day, the guy at the um, station of the gate says, hey, we have some visitors. Some men of God are here to see you. Oh, wow. And he knew exactly who they were. So he said, let them in. And he walks out toward them. And they stretch out their hand to him. And he... He touches the first guy and down he goes. And he just like the power jolt because what he did is he thought, I have more power in my hand he knew who than he what was. you have in right. yours. He knew that the righteousness of God was more powerful than any demonic mm -hmm. stronghold of the enemy or any demonic weapon. And he touched them. The other guys fell back and were terrified at what happened. Long story short, they ended up repenting 
Um, oh, and wow. being terrified by the fear of the Lord. And the power. And the power of righteousness. Yeah. And he told me that this, this man of God told me, he said, righteousness is the greatest power. And Jesus actually said that because he said, the ruler of this world is coming, but he has nothing in me. Uh -huh. And he completely conquered the devil because of his righteousness. If he had failed in one aspect by falling into temptation, uh -huh. he would have lost he would have lost. He and wouldn't we be would the lost. king of kings. He wouldn't be the eternal savior, deliverer. He wouldn't be any of those. But righteousness mm -hmm. actually won the battle. And then he gives that to us. And then he gave it to us. Free he, clear. he became our sin. Yeah. So that he could pour all that righteousness into all of us because we are his body. So when God looks at us now that have Christ, he looks at us like Christ. Yeah. And and it wasn't anything we did, nothing we did to deserve it. You, you don't have to strive for it. You exactly. just have to believe. And I just want to say, this is not an hour to compromise. No. I mean, it never is. But especially now, because we've got an acceleration of demonic activity in the earth today, an absolute intentionality in covens to target Christians. Mm -hmm. And I'm seeing so many leaders get whacked, whacked, whacked because of compromise in their life. Don't compromise anything. Live your life in such a way that if a little child were to follow you, say everything All that you day. say, do everything that you do, that they wouldn't fall, that they would, they would be in a godly environment. And so I'm just asking you to bring out the weapon of righteousness. It is your most powerful weapon. I've heard ex-Satanists say, whoa, they were so scared by the light that they saw in believers. I've had it even on the inner city, in the inner city where we've been doing work down in the inner city. I've had people who were steeped in sin. Mm -hmm. These are, are people who are corrupt. They're on drugs. They've killed people. They, you know, sh they got, shoot people. And they say, whoa, the light on you. Oh, yeah. I heard a psychic one time. We were doing um, some uh, dream interpretation for the tape. Lord. And, <laughs> and he says, whoa, the light on you is so powerful, you know. And, and he said, what is that? You know, you've got a strong spirit guy. I thought, <laughs> yeah, I've got the strongest spirit guy in the universe, oh, that was so the Holy fun. Spirit. But, um, but they see it. Yeah, they, they see, see it. it. They see it. And God wants you to shine so brightly in righteousness that you will never fall prey to the enemy, but you will just go forward carrying your light, expelling the darkness, mm -hmm. expelling the evil that is before you and annihilating the enemy. Yeah, you know, the, the, the story I told you about the ex-Satanist, um, when he, he said that when, you saw, when he saw a Christian coming who knew who they were and had their weapon out, they knew, they fled from yeah. him because they spend so much time getting themselves infested with these filthy demons for power. The more you have, the more you, yeah. you become empowered that the demons themselves would begin to flee in your shadow, your shadow cast yeah, upon yeah, yeah. them, they would flee. Yeah. I mean, it is like... So powerful. Oh, it's so amazing. It's the righteousness of God, and we're called to be a light. It says, arise and shine because your light yes. has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Mm -hmm. In this book, Exposed, Witchcraft in the Church, I reveal 12 weapons that you can use you have to have them and all. annihilate <laughs> you the devil's strategy. Um, it, it is an amazing hour that we're living in. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's an hour of great victory. It's an hour where we overcome, where we get the spoils of the enemy. And it is an hour for you to prevail and to and to just get so excited over all that God is going to give mm -hmm. you. Because every time we wipe out a demon, we get a territory. Yeah, and please, please get this book. Because if you read this book and you, you, you absorb all the principles and all the keys and everything that she has written in this prophetic alert, you will have nothing to fear. You will stand in so much confidence, but you need to know. You need to know what's in this book. This is, this is a gift, Lord. This is just a gift, you know. Thank I thank you. you for that. Well, thank you so much, Shirley. And thank you for watching today. And if you're not part of my YouTube um, channel yet, 
Uh, why don't you go to youtube.com uh, today and put Patricia King in there and subscribe to my channel because then you'll get the alerts when I share um, live uh, sessions and, and new things that will feed your spirit. I want you built up. I want you strong. I want you to be everything that God's called you to be. And so I would love to be able to resource you. So um, go to YouTube now and subscribe. And thank you so much for joining us today on the book club.